All right, folks, in this example, we're going to use R for text mining, which is one of the data mining algorithms that you can do. And um, we're going to text mine a file from the uh, Virginia Department of Health's website on hospital acquired infections. Uh, the file is hai.txt. You can get that from me. Uh, just email me at jbbrowning at jbbrowning.com, and I can uh, get that for you. But this is a sample output of what the file looks like. Um, and we're just going to mine this for uh, some different patterns of terms and then show that in a word cloud um, data visualization. All right, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure <clears throat> that uh, you have some cleanup work done on the actual text file that you're going to mine and make sure it's in a location that you can get to. In this particular example, it's on the desktop of the computer that I'm working on. Um, but you could change the path to wherever you wanted it. The cleanup work that you need to do is it's a plain text file and then it has a hard return at the end of the document to avoid read errors because that's going to stop your file input. Um, so simple, you can open that up in a notepad, any kind of text editor and fix that, but just make sure that you have a hard return at the end that it is in plain text. First thing you want to do is make sure that R knows where you are working. So the command to do that is git working directory <coughs> and then that will show you where your current working directory is. In this case I've changed it to my username that I logged in as and my desktop under the users folder. However that can easily be changed um, with the set wd command. For example if I did need to change this and it wasn't correct I could type in set wd and then I could give the full path to where I actually wanted to set this to. <clears throat> and then close it up. And then of course you want to check that. I'll use the up arrow key. Check that it is set and in fact it is set so I'm happy. Alright, <clears throat> now again the file that we're going to text mine um, is in the path of where I'm working. It's on my desktop. It could be any place. I want to set a variable name to that file so that I can get to it easily. So I'm just going to call it HAI file. And then I'm going to say that's equal to the name of the file that I want to point it to, which is HAI.txt. And then if I want to check it out, I'm just going to read it, um, read it out to a file. This is case sensitive read lines with a capital L. <coughs> and then what I'm trying to read, my variable that I set up and I'll press enter and then let's just see exactly how long this thing is oops I have to type in the right one left off parenthesis R told me that, so I just kind of finished it up. So, anywho, long story short, 29 um, is the length, 29 lines. <clears throat> now, the next task that we're going to do is we're going to create a text corpus, which is a structured set of textual information um, that is put into basically a format so that our text mining package TM can make a little better sense of it. So the first thing we'll have to do is we'll have to import the text mining library. If you're using uh, uh, RStudio, which is a IDE for R project, makes it a little easier to use. Um, then steps are slightly different. There's a tools menu. But in this example, we're using uh, just regular R um, without the IDE overlay. 
but I would recommend it. <clears throat> so we'll say library. Load in the text mining package. Then we're going to create a vector of data from our file. I'm going to name it VEC for dot vector. Obviously, you don't have to. Source. And we'll put our file in. Now, <clears throat> if you want to see some of the options that are available in the TM package, get transformations. Tell you how to do, or what, tell you what the options are. And if you see, we can strip white space, we can remove punctuation, we can remove numbers, uh, a lot of different options that are available there. Uh, let's see here. Now we need to try and extract some of the things that we need from this vector with the TM package. So we're going to create my working doc dot corpus and we're going to say corpus and take our vector my doc dot vector <coughs> Then we'll switch everything to lowercase so it's a little less confusing. So what I can do is I can just use my up arrow key to kind of shorten things a little bit. And then we'll use the text mining map command TM map. And we have my working doc dot corpus. say to lower to lowercase <clears throat> use our arrow key again this time we're going to remove punctuation it's capital P sorry oh. helps to spell it right Much better. We'll remove some numbers. Obviously, you don't have to do this. You can play around with it and try it a few different ways if you wanted to. And let's see. We'll remove the stop words that we're not too worried about mining. And since we're dealing with English, English. And then let's see what we did. So 
So if you notice, it goes line by line and it's kind of cleaned things up for us. Remember, we had 29 lines in here. All right, so this is the cleanup part. <clears throat> if we wanted to look at just one line, for example, we could pick just 29. And notice it's only going to show us one. Okay, line 29 that we told it we wanted to see. Now, um, we need to kind of organize this in, in something more like a spreadsheet uh, fashion, a term document matrix. So we will say term document matrix and then of course we grab our corpus And let's see here, we'll bring that in. Boy, my spelling. Turn. We need term. Then we'll say TDM. And then we find sparsity of terms, maximum term length. Um, also, how many entries that we're dealing with. Um, so now let's refine our findings even more. We're finding frequent terms. Find our low frequency terms. And there we see our low frequency terms. Now let's look and see what we can find associated with the word often. Associated with the word often. So we'll say find associates. And then we'll look at our term document matrix that we've created. say let's look for the word often and 0.25% level let's see typo here, sorry about that. And we'll press our up arrow key. Let's go back and put in the single quote that we needed. That up arrow key is nice. There we go. We find our associations <coughs> often used, it looks like happens a whole lot. Often associated looks like it's the next highest often good the next all right let's uh, remove our sparse terms we're going to make a second um, term document matrix here TDM2 and then we're going to say remove sparse terms and then we'll take our original term document matrix Sparse equals point nine five and then we'll do find frequent terms again. TDM 
low frequency equals 2. Bring that up. Find associations with often again. And now let's make a word cloud of what we're looking at to kind of visualize this data instead of just looking at all these numbers and fractional amounts. We'll import our word cloud library. And then let's load the text mining library. program on my working doc dot corpus. Just remember we're gonna kind of put this out in a graphical form so our viewers can make a little better sense of it than just all those numbers. And for colors, let's see we'll come up with some fun colors. We'll say brewer Palette, and we will do eight. And let's do dark two. And then we'll say random order for how we're going to show these things. So this will change every time you run it. Even though it says false, it will um, throw them out in a random picture. The order won't be random, though. Let's look and see what we have. Slide this over so you can see it. And there is our word cloud. Um, obviously, this could be with any data, and you could even use word cloud on something else other than text mining. This particular example, it's been shown with uh, text mining. But lets you visualize your data. Kind of interesting. Um, ton of other information available on the web. Um, but for now, at least you know how to text mine a file. Take care and have a good day.